All right, <laughs> I'm going to note the time is 5.04 and uh, call this meeting of the Community Television of Santa Cruz County Board of Directors, uh, September 28th, 2020, uh, to order. Would our secretary kindly call the roll? Yes, Chair Maziars. Here. Director Hall. Muted. Yeah. <laughs> Here. There he goes. Director Rand. Here. Director Mannheim. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Lanier. Here. Director Shaw. Here. Director Gudger. Here. I Thank you here. very much, Larry. All right, so we have a uh, full house, a quorum. Uh, I don't see any members of the public here, but we'll, uh, so item number two, oral communications. Um, does anybody want to address the board? I don't see anybody, moving on. Any, uh, item number three, any late additions to agenda additions, deletions from any board members or staff? All right, seeing none, we can move on to our consent agenda, which is items four, five, six, and seven. We have and items eight. Sorry. Oh, and eight. And eight. <laughs> That's right. It goes on to the next page. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so we have uh, minutes from our June 22nd, 2020 meeting is item number four. Minutes from our special board meeting of August 17th is item number five. Item number six are our June financial reports. Item seven is our July financial reports. Item eight is our August financial reports. Are there any uh, corrections to the minutes from any board members? Uh, Director Gudger? Um, I'm sorry to do this, but the first minutes, the one from June 22nd, under item nine, update on CARES Act, it seems some words got dropped and I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm having trouble understanding what it said. Yeah, uh, it, it needs to be edited, and I, I would trust the, uh, I saw that, I wasn't going to say anything. Well, which line? But I would just... trust, it's the first line. Oh, yeah. I, I think what it should say is, Director Hall thanked Executive Director Reed for getting yeah. the application process. Thank and... you, Executive Director Reed. I think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly so, it. Yeah, that would be the, the only, uh, anyhow, I wasn't going to say anything, but Keith's an engineer. He has that ability to watch things carefully. I'm, well, I'm sure it was in there in one of the revisions and I probably just yeah. faced yeah. it out. So. I am too, but uh, um, I, I guess I thought there was more than just that one line, but you're right. That's all I see now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for catching that. I have been lax, I must admit, on closely proofing. Uh, Vice Chair Rand has been spoiling me by... Um, jumping in quickly and responding to our secretary's minutes. Um, well, most of the, most of the time, you know, they were fine, and I, you know, so I don't know what happened to the June meetings because they were fine when when Larry and I communicated. So it seems like a million years ago too, doesn't it? So much has happened. Yeah, June. I know June was a whole other world. Um, okay, so thank you uh, for those corrections. Any further corrections on the minutes? Seeing none, did, would our um, Chair of our finance committee, like to comment on the finance uh, financial reports by any chance? Well, first we want to thank Mel for doing a good job. Uh, we've been looking at the numbers very carefully. Uh, one surprise happened uh, in August, uh, and we had an increase in our lease revenue, which was very nicely welcomed. So that was one thing uh, you'll notice there that I think was a, a nice improvement. Um, other than that, no, I mean, there's going to be a bigger item talked about later, which has taken a lot of the finance committee's time, but I'll defer to that. But just thank Mel for her work during this kind of strange period of keeping our books in line with what's been going on. Great. Thank you, Director Hall. Um, did our Treasurer uh, Hall, would, would uh, any of other board members have any questions, comments on the financial reports? If not, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. As amended. All As right. amended, of course. Do we have a second? Sure, I'll second. Second. <laughs> All right. Seconded. Okay, so we have a motion from Vice Chair Rand, second from um, Director Gudger. Would you kindly call the roll? Uh, Secretary Laurent. Yeah. Yes, Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Chair Maziarz. Yes. Director Lanier. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. 
Director Shaw. Yes. Director Rand. Yes. Director Manheim. Aye. Director Gudger. Yes. Approved unanimously. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Moving right along uh, to our regular agenda, we have item nine, which is the oral report of our executive director. I did. Uh, didn't check with you beforehand, Becca, but I did include both the uh, report from June, was it, that I had emailed directly to our board members. I figured it'd be good to get it into the public record. Mm -hmm. And also the, the report from the last two months that you just gave me last week. So kindly take it away. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, cover July and August here today. Gosh, this, we're so behind. <laughs> so, uh, I can barely remember. Um, in under the financial category, we during July and August we were kind of we had been approved for the um, EIDL loan, and uh, we I did talk to somebody um, recently in August. I talked to someone, and they had um, they said, well, on our dashboard it says funding approved funding. And so I, we didn't hear anything. So I called them and uh, they said, oh yes, you're funding, you're not funded. So we are just uh, continuing to work on this. So they sent a whole bunch of more documents. I filled them out and we're still in the funding group. Um, I did speak to somebody yesterday, I think, and um, sort of a confusing call. They called me and asked me to call them back and I called them back and they asked me, they said, well, what do we want from you now? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, you called me. <laughs> so um, so but they're very nice and they are humans. I'm not talking to robots or just computers or anything. They're real people and they're like, well, uh, let me, uh, we did call you. Well, let me get back to you on that. So uh, we're in the process though. We're still in there. So um, under co-working, um, although, you know, our break-even number is 10,000, that's what we put in our budget to hit. And um, our projection for July, it used to be 10,000 rather, our projection for July was eight. And in June, we earned 8,900, so better than eight. And then in August, we earned 12,900. So is that, is that supposed to be July? Because you had June yeah. on the previous. Oh, that should be July. I think that, that was July, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, well, just don't make sure. That's okay. Well, I, I, now you know my secret and I just go with the old one and change stuff. <laughs> so, um, so under uh, paid services, uh, we did five regular meetings in July and 17 in August and July, they're just, they don't meet much. That's kind of their downtime. All, all government meetings, almost all of them stop completely in July. <clears throat> Then uh, we produced a couple of government webinars in July and uh, five in August. Um, I have a fun pie chart for you just to spice things up. Um, under facilities and equipment, we are installing a new captioner for the county and the new captioner uh, and uh, we, we're still working on it. We've been installing it for a while. There's some kind of cork that we can't get <clears throat> out, but we're also installing a new one for the city. And we just got it. And so um, uh, Victor's uh, gonna start working on it soon. He's trying to set up a time when we can go in. And uh, under equipment and studio rental, we did we earned uh, about $400 in July and almost $700 in August. And Keith redid our, uh, our system for renting and for tracking, tracking the rentals. And that meant that we could have a pie chart. So we have this fun pie chart showing us, and it's impossible to read because it's very tiny. But what you do see is that we are renting a variety of things. And a lot of what we're renting now because of COVID is mic stands and boom poles. So people can interview someone from a distance. So um, that's the big blue area here, I believe. So a C, that, um, a, is a C stand a mic stand? Is that what that is? Well, we're not, no. no, a C stand could be a mic stand. A C stand is just a particular configuration, a very okay. heavy duty thing. It can hold a light or a microphone or, or a scrim or all kinds of things. It's just built to hold stuff. So, and people do rent those, but C stands generally are what people rent with, the, um, uh, with our lights, with the um, KinoFlow lights, because they're, they're heavy duty. So um, there's a fun pie chart and, um, 
I like the, the variety of stuff that's being rented is good. It's not like we just have one thing people are renting. And you can if thank you for that. If you, uh, if you enlarge it to 200%, you can read the pie chart really well. <laughs> Very, <good. laughs> Very well done. All right. Well, I didn't do it. Ian made it for me. Keith made it happen and Ian printed it out for me. So I just copied it. But I just like that we can do that. It's very, it's nice to know we get a quick picture of, of a date range of what we're doing in equipment. So that's kind of nice to have. And later we'll be able to kind of figure out if, if things more, we'll, we'll obviously we'll know what things rent more often, but we'll also know if there's certain times of year that more things are rented or more certain kinds of things are rented in some parts of the year, not others. We can just learn more from that nice, that nice ability to be able to extract that, those metrics. And that's thanks to Keith. And um, we have the ad hoc facilities committee met twice in July and three times in August. We selected a building that we thought would be um, kind of ticked all the boxes for what we're looking for in a co-working space. Uh, as far as where it's located and what's located around it. We're always looking for a place with restaurants around it, a bank, places to drink. I don't know why, but that's on the list. And uh, that, uh, that was a place that we liked. Um, we did uh, put out, we did look at a lease from them. They sent us a lease and we had some deal points that we wanted. And uh, some of them we cannot get. And um, I'm gonna turn this over to Tom now for a, a quick interlude on where we are on this process. So basically we've been looking at sort of going back and forth with um, the potential tenants to see what we could get. And we, I think we've reached a point where we're not gonna get any more from them. Um, so we, as the, um, we had the finance committee which I'm on both committees at this point, take a look at sort of, okay, with that, that potential second lease, what would that do to our finances? And it, um, it as the, so the finance committee looked at that and they're now sending that back to the um, ad hoc committee, which I will also be on. So we're sort of a little bit of dual things, but we need to look at it. There are some issues we need to look at and really, really, take a look at whether or not this will work for us. We're not sure financially whether the numbers pencil out. So um, the ad hoc committee is gonna be getting together probably in the next week or so. And stay tuned. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, now we're moving on to mission programming, which we, it appears in the, the um, in, the, in my report sporadically because we're not always able to do it. But because of the state of our county, we are doing, we did a lot of it. Um, we did all of the fire press conferences, the 6 a.m. and the 6 p.m. We also did an election, a sort of a DIY election special. We had um, all the candidates uh, record according to our instructions, their own message, their own statement, and then we assembled it into a program. We um, did a wear a mask PSA. And we also have been running PSAs that we've been able to get about voting. And um, uh, we also just recently, we were able to get uh, the, an organization on the West side did a candidates forum via Zoom for city council. And they- I think it's actually the neighbor, it's the neighborhood. neighborhood. It's, it's, a, it's a citywide organization, oh, not just it? the West side. Oh, okay. Yeah. I couldn't tell, I actually never, got them to speak with me but today they emailed me a link to their forum so we can put it on tv so, so can i just get make a suggestion you might look carefully at that link because i got the same email uh, and tried okay. it yeah and i'm not sure that link will work it okay. looked like it was actually a zoom meeting it was probably the original zoom meeting oh what unless they, they sent you something different they said it was a link to the recording and they sent me a password. Did you get a password? Yep. Oh. I got, this. sounds like what I got too. Well, I forwarded it to Victor, so I'm sure I'll hear back from him. <laughs> so I'll try again. Uh, I'll see if I, I'll, I'll, I, I emailed them in a couple of places and left them phone calls everywhere and they, and they, they did, they did finally communicate with us. So. Um, Becca, if, if that doesn't uh, work, uh, the Democratic Women's Club of Santa Cruz County did one. Now, it, it isn't everybody. It's just the Democrats. But uh, oh. there's a link to that. So if you don't have the one that uh, you and Tom are talking about, let me know. 
and I'll get you. Yeah, that would be great. To link like up the Democratic Women's Club. That one worked out really well. I, I watched it and it was very professionally done. I like to have as many of those as we can because we can't go out and shoot them now. And so that people are doing them on Zoom is great for us and we can get them out to the whole county so everybody can see, not that the whole Okay, county I'll, I'll follow up on the DWC's one. All right. Is the DW? I was going to say, Joe, um, what about the, the John Laird review? Yes. Of the, uh, oh, the props to too. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because he, really he really tried to stay down the middle and say, these people are for it, these people are against it. And, you know, he, it, was okay. very, it was very good. I mean, I, I've got, I've decided, I know how I'm voting. Is that another okay. Zoom? Uh, Zoom? Yeah. 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 No, it's actually on YouTube. Kathy oh, D'Angelo oh. uh, produced it. Oh, really? Okay. And it's on YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, well, if you when you know you learn of these things, let me know, and uh, we'll try to get them on television. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so for social media, we did a lot with the fires. We posted everything on all our social media platforms, all of the um, press releases, and all the the conferences that we taped. So um, we had tons of stuff going out all the time until um, we've been posting once a day since 9-11 uh, when it became like 99% contained. So we're now, we still post what they have to say, but they don't have much to say anymore. You mean September 11th. When you say 9-11, I thought the, the, the attack? Well, not September 11th yeah, is yeah, the yeah. date. I'm sorry. That happened. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It just happened to be that date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't mean, yeah, the event. Yeah, that's right. The event has sort yeah. of co-opted the date. Yeah, it yeah. just happened to happen then. Um, did you, folks, did you guys do the recording for the, or the taping for the, the 6 o'clock a.m. and p.m. and the briefings and all that? And then because I know that Cal Fire then put it up on their Twitter or on some other format too, but you guys did the taping. I think there were a number of different, weren't there? Like Channel 8 was there. Yeah, and we did them and- Somebody uh, had a phone. I think one of the, yeah. they were probably live streaming on a phone. I mean, I, I ran into uh, Lynn. I was like, too bad we don't have the ability right now to go live. Because I know yeah, uh, he was going home and you know, getting back to the studio and editing and then trying to get them up within like an hour or two. But um, that would have been, some great to carry live if, if we had the technology. Well, I watched them live and so, so it was good work. I thought it was great having it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, I saw yeah. the one live too. We have the ability to go live with our TriCaster, but not outdoors. <laughs> like a lot, and sometimes they'd move the meeting. It would be outdoors and it would start right. to rain and they'd go indoors. So we couldn't do that this time. But I did think that we might like to outfit the auditorium where they do that, which I think is where the city council meets for Scotts Valley with a system to do that. So we'll, once later, we'll talk to them about that. So we have a place to go live from there if this happens again. Actually, uh, you can't go live from the Scotts Valley uh, city council. Oh yeah, we can. We can plug right in and do that. Yeah. At least for the Scotts Valley area. I don't know if it's countywide. It goes to our channel. I'll talk also, I, I think Lynn was talking about how, I mean, I don't know, they're probably super expensive, but that he said the, like the network folks had some fancy, I mean, with the fires, I know at the county, the, they were talking about cows and, you know, uh, or all these different, you know, uh, it was like a light, like sell on light truck or something like that. And, but I mean, I'm sure for, I mean, I don't know if just like a, a Wi-Fi hotspot has the bandwidth to go live. Um, if you've got like a camera hooked into some sort of encoder, you know, connect you know tethered to your phone or something like that but um you know in terms of uh you know capital expenses on equipment it might be good to have um you know something we can like look that. Into that we can go live with our portable tricaster that goes live but but you still need a uh a, 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 you need to tether i mean to be connected to somebody's we need to be connected to somebody else's internet connection yeah. right somebody exactly. fast we don't bring our own you know right. but when 5g gets rolled out everywhere. We'll all have 15 fingers and toes and we can have lots of bandwidth. Well, I think it's a good time to talk about how can we go live in these emergency situations because we've had a lot of them and that would have been a handy thing to be able to do. So it's certainly a conversation we should have. Yeah, I looked into before, there was a company selling a white space transmission system. Uh-huh. Isn't that radio? Am I wrong about that? What's that? 
I thought that was radio, that white space. No, no, that's TV. It's in the white space between channels six and seven. Oh. Where FM is. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, but the problem was the reason besides it being maybe proprietary or expensive or whatever is that we could only do North County. And it's, oh. and Maitreya could tell us about that. You know, the county to, to get to South County goes up to the mountain and back down, right? Right, but that's a point to point, right? That's not going over public internet, right? That Correct. what you're talking about is is a direct right. link. Whereas I don't know if the, I mean, I guess the, those, I, mean, I don't know enough about high end, you know, broadcast. I guess when they have those satellite trucks, they have a dish. I mean, you probably know more about it, Becca. They're, they're I guess they do have some sort of a direct link well, you have a yeah, you have a dish, and you drive up as high as you can, and you you can do a you can do a microwave or a satellite dish depending on what kind of truck you have, and you're you're aiming for I think Fremont feet, but it's a uh, or Loma Prieta, or Loma Prieta. It's, it's uh, yeah, there's a there's an antenna there, but there's a there's another one down toward Watson. So that might be outside of our our means. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> that would be. We already did that the, with the, the bus, one, and we know it is. <laughs> yeah. I would say the one down towards Watsonville used to be the KSBW antenna, and I think they sold it. It's also though K KQED has one down there. They're on one because that's where K KTEH goes through there, or now KQED Plus. I can't remember yeah. the name of it. And there is a dip in there. There's a place where you can't get a signal, and people call all the time. But but yeah, that's a microwave truck kind of thing, which we probably wouldn't want to do. But if we could find a way to do it over the internet, but then it would just be streaming, wouldn't be on our channels. But that's you know, that's we, could, we could pull a signal from the internet and put it on our channels. We've done that before. Oh, okay. yeah, we, we streamed a number of live concerts this summer. Um, a couple of them actually over cell phone um, to, to both YouTube <clears throat> and Facebook simultaneously. It was pretty good. I yeah. Mean, you know, just it, it, it was definitely doable. So okay. cool. Well, we should get together and see what we can do for the next emergency. <laughs> Hopefully not right away. Right. right. You just have to have a couple cell providers available. That's right. the, you, you can't rely on one in this county. You got it. You got it. Depending on where you are, you know, one works better than the other, but that's just the nature of things. Depending on where you are. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Where were we, Becca? <laughs> we, are, we are now at our Corona response update. All right. <laughs> so, Fantastic. Um, we've done a bunch of stuff inside. Uh, the building to make it uh, safer. Um, we did a lot of it right uh, right at the beginning, so we haven't done too many things left. What we did was we made we we made um, individual enclosed spaces around the desks. So uh, they are we used pop up canopies like five foot by five foot, which is the size of our desks, and then the canopies have uh, a, like a Velcro. Um, edge on the inside. So we Velcroed clear shower curtains to them. And so you can be out and you can kind you can you're not boxed into a tiny five by five thing. You can see out and the light comes in, but you're safe from no air comes in. Well are, air comes are in. people using those? Yes they are. <laughs> and so we're adding two more so that um, what it does is we've got nine desks so you're going to have right. to use your tic-tac-toe skills here. So um, we have th three of them go to right down the center, the center three, and then the other three will go across the, uh, the, the uh, uh, mid section horizontally. So we've got vertical and horizontal. So then the people on the corners are surrounded by the other ones that are contained. So there's still a space for people to be outside, but they are pretty, um, pretty secluded as far as people you know, walking by them and, and that sort of thing. And we already have the path of travel and sanitation and all the other things, but it just makes it just feel a little bit safer. And people seem to like it. And um, let's see. Oh, I lost my place. Uh, um, are we requiring, question, are we requiring uh, folks to wear their masks when they're in their little uh, cubicles? No, no they don't wear their masks when they're in their little cubicles. Right. But they do have to as they move around the place. If they're, right, right. they go that's, to the front door or to the bathroom, they have to wear their masks. That's how it is at the county building, yeah. Uh, as long as you're so sitting I, I'm still. I'm pretty grateful for that. Yeah, I feel sorry for the people working in, you know, Whole Foods have to wear their masks for eight hours straight. All day, yeah, yeah. That's, that's tough. Definitely. Especially if they wear glasses. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. Um, I mean, 
so that's it. That's all I have to say. I, I'm happy to entertain any questions if you have them, but um, that's our report for the Secretary Larry, you had a question? I actually have a question. What, can, uh, the, the big jump in August, what was that, do you have what that was attributed to? Was it a- yeah, I do. Uh, we rented two offices to Dignity Health and it, something happened and they kind of got behind. So we got two payments at once. So really the month before should have been a little higher and the month after should be higher. So it would have spread out so that we would still have over, we would be over our, um, over our projection in all those months. It just all landed in August. Okay, I just didn't know if it was attributed to more people coming, you know, as they kind of loosen things up. Okay. All right. Well, no, no, but but we are up. I mean, we were at seven thousand, so right. we've gotten up to over ten now. So we are getting more people coming in because it's a little bit looser. Okay, thank you. It's a very good sign. Any other questions from the board? All right, seeing none. Thank you very much, Becca, for that report. Uh, we can move on to item number ten, which is the oral report from the volunteer advisory committee chair. Um, Keith Gudger, um, uh, and, and do I know, I, I, have we actually opened up the studio to members yet? Nope, not yet. Okay, and, um, but there is a document that I attached, which you've given me for our last meeting that was canceled. I don't know if you wanted to comment on that or. I just, yeah, I'd like to comment since the meeting was canceled that we, the studio supervisors met and agreed to a modified uh, modifications to how we run the studio and then we were supposedly open for the month of July but no one actually did it and then we closed down at the end of July. Uh, Becca has said and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong that if if the county goes to yellow we will try and open. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah right now we're still in in the overwhelm zone so yeah it doesn't seem like a good time to get together but if we get to yellow I'd be happy to open so there's orange in between where we are now and yellow. Okay. And is there anything else? I think that's it. As Becca mentioned, uh, we re redid the equipment rental system. Um, so she gets a pie chart now. <laughs> uh, part of the reason we did it is that uh, our server is being held back security wise with the old system and now that the old system's gone I can bring the server in compliance with some security measures and make it more secure and I was going to have to maintain the old I'm maintaining the old system anyway which was really crippling to me because <laughs> it took so much work so now we have a new system that's easier to maintain and if we end up with another facility in South County we should be able to add that to the system because we have control over it. Um, and there's been a few issues with integration with satellite, but I think we've worked those out. Barbara seemed happy with it. So Ian's giving me feedback on what he needs. Uh, I think that's about it. Fantastic. Um, question for me, uh, have you heard uh, from the members? Are they clamoring to get back? I mean, you said it was open in July, but nobody jumped at it uh, at the opportunity. Uh, are, have you heard from uh, producers about being eager to get back in and we wrap have up production. One producer, we have one producer who definitely wants back in, um, and then he did a show in the conference room, and we're going to have to talk to him about maybe improving this, the the uh, COVID restrictions a little bit more when he does a show if he does it in the conference room. But mm. uh, that's I punted that one to Becca. <laughs> <laughs> You know, people are using the RSVP too, and they're doing their own shows at home with Zoom. Mm, and uploading them to yeah. our, our channel. So yeah, while I'm on that, um, a couple of us volunteers continue to do the nonprofit spotlight. And since the pandemic started, we've done at least a dozen shows using Google Meet. And it's called the Pandemic Series. It's on our YouTube channel. And it's about nonprofits and how they're dealing with loss of funding, not able to have fundraising events, uh, completely changing their mission during this time. I mean, uh, we, we got Susan True from the Community Foundation on. Who, they've done huge things both during the pandemic and for the fires. Um, I mean, most recently, 
Uh, let's see, I can't remember who we just did. But we've done a, a lot. We did a second harvest. We've done everybody we can get in there. And thanks to Matilda, she gave me an idea for three shows. And it turns out it's going to be one show uh, October 1st. So. One show? <laughs> yes, Women Care and Survivors Healing Center are going to be on one show together. That's the next one. But it's, it's been really good. It's gone very easy. The host, Steve Plage, goes to the RSVP and we use Google Meet. And then all I have to do is add lower thirds and I usually get them out the same day because it's pretty easy. Wow, mm -hmm. fantastic. And, and does Google Meet do the same sort of thing that Zoom does and a lot of the, or just kind of automatically levels the audio for you so you don't have to do much uh, audio sweetening? Yeah, it does a great job of the audio, and it, it also puts the name down on the bottom. So if I can get, even when I don't have a lower third up, the people are ID'd, except for when they log into the wrong email account. Oh, okay. <laughs> but their dog's email account, then it says Fluffy or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've me. only had one show I had to go in and put a band across the bottom of the block. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, glad to hear that, um, that we're carrying on as best we can under these trying circumstances. Um, any questions for our VAC chair from other members of the board? All right, seeing none, thank you, uh, Keith, very much. Um, we can move on to uh, item 11, which will be very brief, oral report of the board chair. I have nothing, but I'm just very happy to see you all here and everybody looks very well. And uh, I hope uh, we're all taking care of our mental and physical health as best as we can. Um, so uh, item 12, do we have any board member or staff requests for specific items to appear on our next meeting agenda? Uh, seeing none, all right. We can move right on to announcements. Um, thank you to our wonderful staff. Thank you, Becca, for keeping the lights on and even uh, ambitiously trying to forge forward with, uh, you know, uh, possible expansion. And thank you for all the committee members and um, for for putting all the hours in and trying to see if uh, you know what 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 we can make uh, work and uh, for all your board all the board members for your service um, and hopefully we and I, I have what also one other thank you uh, yes, to please. Becca uh, and I didn't want to bring it up earlier because I didn't want to belabor the meeting but we have three minutes before everybody dies of hunger uh, <laughs> out of the blue about uh, Two months ago, a former employee, I won't give his name for his own confidentiality, appeared in an email who had a 401k account with CTV that I'd never heard about. And we closed them all down, but evidently somewhere in the process, he wasn't told and it was still active with the company. And uh, Becca's helped me a little, and I've done more research than I ever want to again on 401ks. But it looks like we're about the end of the process, and this former employee will be able to secure his IRA funds and transfer them to another group that he wants to do. So it's interesting. CTV's been around so long, people don't remember from 35 years ago what happened. And here was one that showed up. and. Luckily, his uh, IRA is safe and it'll be transferred where he wants to. And uh, thank you, Becca. We're going to go Friday and get a medallion seal on Becca's signature. And off it goes to step one. Uh, he said he'd worked on it for six months. So I think us taking two months isn't too bad. Mm. <laughs> uh, and it was a reasonable amount of money in the IRA account. I was kind of shocked that he'd been sitting on it that long. But it's, it's saved and it, it'll go to where he wants it to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would thank like to much. thank Joe for all the work he's done on this. I've done easy Amen. stuff. He has done really hard, like horrible yeah. calls with these guys and know what they don't know anything and they pass them on to another guy and then they give wrong information and we get all the way to the bank and it's not what we need. And so Joe's the one, he's got the patience of Job. Yeah. Well, whatever. I just thought you'd enjoy a little bit of past CTV history because it is a legacy uh, story. Wow. That is well, you know, Joe, I always knew you were not a sloppy, a sloppy one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, you had something to add? Uh, just for a little information, when I first got the email asking about this, he wanted to know if Jeffrey Dunn was still the executive director. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Going way back. That's wow. Wow. Boy, that's a long time ago. 
Um, on, on a somber note, uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, I saw on Facebook, I haven't seen other confirmation, but that uh, um, former member uh, Sandra, uh, Sandra D, was it? Spilly Chili's Bowl of Rocks. Um, Sandra Lee, yeah, Sandra Lee passed away uh, recently. And, you know, I know we've had some difficulties um, with her at some points, but, you know, she was a part of our family uh, for a number of years, produced a lot of wonderful television. So, um, you know, let's keep her and her family in our thoughts and do our best to uh, continue on uh, community television's mission to, to inform, entertain, and in many ways enliven our community here. So um, if there's no nothing else, I will uh, entertain uh, item number four, a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion from Mr. Rand. And we have a second from Director Lanier. Uh, do we need to do a roll call? How about just uh, voice acclamation? All right. Bye. Well, uh, everybody Bye. take care of yourselves. We'll see you in October. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Talk sooner. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Becca.